me know when you're good. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome again to the Telford Muse Prophecy Conference. As we're going to proceed today, we're going to go through the test that was part of yesterday's presentation. So I hope you're ready. I hope you have prepared for the work that needs to be done and for the information that we're all now going to address. So, if we are ready, shall we now seek our Heavenly Father's guidance in prayer? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we thank you for the opportunity we have to open your word, to consider that which we must know for this time in our history. Please guide us. Open our minds, open our eyes, help us so that our minds may be open to receive that from your word that we need to know for this time in earth's history. May your angels attend us. We ask that you grant us wisdom. Be with us now. Guide us and direct us. Hide me behind your cross so that it is your words, that it is your character that others may see. Be with us now. For this we ask and this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for those that went through yesterday's presentation, there was a sermon that was given by a Protestant pastor that we're going to be reviewing today. Behind me on the board, I have placed an understanding. Now, we're going to get into this, but we're going to review what this pastor had to say, and we're going to address several points. There's going to be questions I'm going to ask, and I want to see what you have learned from this, these discussions of symbols because these are going to be very important for us as our message is developed. Now, according to this particular pastor, much speculation has been generated over the meaning of the 2300 days found in Daniel 8.14. In 1980, there was a meeting held at Glacier View in Colorado because a, an Adventist pastor by the name of Desmond Ford challenged the understanding of the 2300 days of Daniel 8. Now, this Protestant pastor continues, in fact, many denominations, Adventism, began from one, Miller, one man's, William Miller's, misinterpretation of this prophecy. Denominations that developed from this error are the Advent Christian Church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and the Jehovah's Witnesses. As a result, millions of people have been led into religious error. Wouldn't it be good if we knew the proper meaning of this prophecy? Now, brothers and sisters, do we agree with what this man has presented so far? Okay? The answer is no. Now, his primary premise is that the 2300 days relates to the sanctuary, not Christ's second coming. Yet, when we look at this chart, what was the focus that we are seeing on the chart itself? Is it not that this is to prepare us, that our characters are to be prepared for the second coming? His premise is that the daily sacrifices on God's sanctuary would end, 
The sanctuary would remain closed or taken away for 2,300 days until it was cleansed. Now, he is correct in his second point. The English word days is not found in the original Hebrew text. Right? What is expressed in the original Hebrew text? Evenings and mornings or Arab Boker. Right? It's actually not correct. Okay. In, in the Hebrew, it just says evening, morning. Evening, morning. It is not plural. Okay. Arif is singular, boker is singular. Okay. So um, often people say evenings and mornings, but it's 2300 evening, morning. Okay. Thank you for that. Now, his premise is that in relationship to the animal sacrifices that were offered each morning and evening, it would be most appropriate to use mornings and evenings when referring to the use of the sanctuary. So his premise here, again, placing the plural, would be incorrect because they are expressed in the singular. Now, I find it interesting if I refer to a Bible translated into Spanish or if I refer to a Bible translated in German, those Bibles do not use days, they use evening, morning. Why then did the translators choose days instead of evening, morning? That's one point that we need to consider carefully. Yeah, and one of the things is if you look at it as evening, morning, then that's a single unit. Right? Right, so there's 2,300 of that unit, evening, morning. Okay. So they understood it to be days. Okay. Now, in this situation, his comment is that many translations have corrected or noted the accurate rendering of the word, quote, days, again, plural, which we are noting as not being correct. Now, this party's premise then continues that the prophecy refers to 2300, as he is saying, mornings and evenings, and that accurately this would make 1,150 days. Now, this man attempts to place this 1,150 days during the time of Antiochus Epiphanes, it's actually Antiochus IV Epiphanes reign during the time of the Seleucid Empire. Now, it's intriguing because do we see anything of this, of Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes being given reference within Scripture? Where do we find it? Maccabees. We find it in the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha offers us many points of history. And it's also interesting that up until 1825, the Bibles that were being produced, all of the King James Bibles that were produced at that time, still had the Apocrypha in them. But it wasn't until 1825 that the British and American Bible societies decided that the Bible should be without the Apocrypha. Now, the direction that we have 
with this. This party is presenting that historically the sanctuary was removed for 1,150 days during Antiochus Epiphanes' reign. One of the tools that has been being presented by Brother Iran is the calendar converter. When we look to make use of these tools, there are some very interesting things that we can glean. And we're going to touch back on this in just a moment. Now, Daniel 8.14 tells us unto 2,300 evening morning, then shall the sanctuary be justified, cleansed. When we're looking at this, if we're going to follow the rules established by Father Miller that allowed us these charts, we need to be looking at things that do no damage to the verse. Correct? Is that how we would see this? Now, in doing no damage, we need to look specifically at these verses to understand what we are being presented. Now, after Daniel was presented with this passage, he is then having to study. Now, if you open your Bibles to Daniel 9, And look at Daniel 9, verse 1. We are being told that when Daniel's prayer is being offered, that this is in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. When is this occurring? Is Babylon still on the world stage? No. This is now Medo-Persia. So we have passed from the head of gold to the body of silver, the body and arms of silver. Because if we were to look at Daniel 8, which we're giving reference with. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. So he's in his third year. So Daniel has had to study this vision that was given to him, this vision of 2300 evening morning. He's had to study this for a number of years. Now, as Daniel is praying, and Daniel's prayer is very key because he is admitting to the sin of his people, and he's placing himself with his people, right? In Daniel 9, verse 20, while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, and 
being caused to fly swiftly, touch me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Now, when we were speaking yesterday, we established from the book of Revelation that prophecy comes to God's servants. How? It comes from from God to Jesus to his angel to his servants. So is that not a direct line? Is this not coming straight from the throne of God? As we would see it. That's the way that I read the Bible presenting it. Any question on that? So this means that this message is important. At the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I came to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Now, what vision are we to consider at this point? English is a very inexact language. And the translators have multiple words from the Hebrew that they have used to translate into vision. Now, if we're looking at Daniel 8, 13, and 14, please turn in your Bibles there. Daniel 8, 13 says, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? Now, if you read the preface of your King James Bible, you will find that when words are italicized, those italicized words are presented as additions from the translators. They received a word they didn't really understand how to use or a term that they couldn't make sense of. Now, when we're going through this, it's interesting to me because in this conversation, we have three parties. We have one that is described as that certain saint. We have one that becomes identified later as the man Gabriel. And Daniel is standing listening to these two talking. Now, that certain saint in the Hebrew would be translated as Palmoni or the wonderful numberer. There are four Bible verses that we could use that will show us that this wonderful numberer is none other than Christ himself. One of those verses we would find in the book of Judges that we have been studying. Because when Manoah and his wife were presented with the understanding that they would have a child, did they not seek to do honor to the one that told them that they would have a child? And what did they ask? Tell us your name so that we may honor you when all this comes to pass. And what was the response? (laughs) 
Why seek you my name, seeing that it is secret? But if we, if we look at the margin reading, secret is wonderful. What are we told in the book of Isaiah of, as far as Christ? What will he be called? Wonderful, Counselor, Almighty God. All of these things, they, they refer directly to what Christ is doing for us today. So as I look at this, we have five words in italics in this one verse. Only one of those words does not fit. Only one of those supplied words should not be there. If we were to render this verse a little differently, it would make a little more sense. So using the alternate readings from the Bible that I have used, which is a 1769 Oxford Revised King James, from which all King James Bibles currently are drawn, we would see this. Then I heard the wonderful numberer speaking, and another saint said unto the wonderful numberer, which spake, How long shall be the vision? How long shall be this concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation? to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. Now, this test that we're going through gives the premise that the 2300 years, as we would present it, is only supposed to be expressed as 1,150 days. Yet, as we are looking at this out of Daniel 9, verse 24 says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make the end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and the prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. The vision being referred to in Daniel 8, 13, is different from the vision being referred to in Daniel 9.24. Correct? Now, when we look at the vision being referred to in Daniel 8.13, this vision properly from the Hebrew, would be expressed as calzon, or a revelation. The vision being referenced here is the mare. Now, later, if we return to Daniel 8, And we take a look at Daniel 8, 26. We are presented with a verse that tells us, and the vision and the mare of the evening and the morning which was told is true. 
Therefore shut thou up the vision, shut thou up the revelation, for it shall be for many days. So this vision is the vision that is true. This vision is a revelation. They are separate items. Now we're going to go deeper into this, of course, when we deal with this tomorrow. But our point currently is to address what this pastor has seen regarding this 1150 days. Now, in this, with Daniel 9, we are, we are told that 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the most holy. That's Daniel 9.24. Daniel 9.25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and the overspreading of abominations he shall make desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now, I gave a brief reference to the Bible tools. In the calendar converter, we are able to make use of different ways of approaching a calendar. The premise that this, this pastor is making is that in 1,150 days, all of these events that are being described within Daniel 8 and Daniel 9 will take place. Now, <clears throat> this representation, if we are reading Daniel 9 properly, we are to have a time period of 70 sevens. But if we do it this way, we 
we would have 490 years, right? Here you have 1,150 days. That is approximately three and a half years. If we're going to take 490 days out of 1,150, we're going to tie up a good percentage of that number of days. If we do what the pastors recommended, we would tie up 245 days. But the point being, does Daniel 9 not give reference to the Messiah? Does it not tell us that this vision is for Daniel's people? Now, since the premise is that all of this took place during the reign of Antiochus IV Epiphanes, when did Antiochus have sway over the land of Israel? 167 to 164, something like that. Okay. So we're talking roughly, I'll put it, I'll put it this way, from about 168 to 164 BC. Was Christ on the earth at that time? So one point that he is making here is doing damage to the verse. He's saying that all of this takes place before Christ is on the earth. Here we have a period of 49 years from 457 B.C. to 408. Why is it important that 457 B.C. be noted? We need to consider two things. Here, we see the, the figure of 677. Here, we have the figure of 677. In the year 677 B.C., Manasseh of Judah was taken captive by Babylon. Was it Assyria? Yes. Okay. Correct. So he is taken captive by Assyria, taken to Babylon, though he is returned to his throne. Judah was no longer an independent nation. 220 years later, in 457 BC, Artaxerxes Longimanus issues a third decree to rebuild Jerusalem. It is the third of four decrees. Cyrus gave a decree. Wasn't it Darius that gave the second? And then you have Artaxerxes. And he gave two decrees in this. Now these decrees are very important, but many of us have forgotten the fact that these four decrees were issued. 
Now, 677 to 457, in the math that we would do, would give us the figure of 220. Two twenty is important for us because as we look at Genesis thirty two, we see the symbol of two hundred and twenty being referenced. At that time in Genesis thirty two, Jacob is returning from his uncle Laban's. Two hundred and twenty various animals are being sent by Jacob to Esau to be restored to him. He wants to be reunited with his twin brother. He doesn't want his brother to be angry with him. This figure of 220 occurs many times within the Bible. It is a point that restoration is necessary. Didn't Christ come to restore us into union with heaven? So when this figure comes up, it's something for us to pay attention with. Now, we return to this situation with Antiochus Epiphanes. In the calendar converter, we have a way where we can look at the different dates when things were occurring. In the book of Maccabees, they give us specific dates to see what was occurring at specific times. Now the premise that is made here is that by adjusting the calendar that we would be able to see that 1,150 days occurred during the reign of Antiochus for shutting up the sanctuary. Now the reason that we refer to Maccabees, first Maccabees is referenced here on the charts. Second, it is a good book of history. Now, I found it interesting using the calendar converter. When we enter these biblical dates into the calendar converter and we make use of the Julian day that is part of the converter that was referenced by Brother Aran in his presentations over the last couple of days, that from the time that this was noted as first with Antiochus doing sacrifices that were not ordained at the temple to the time that the sacrifices were restored, we come to a total not of 1,150 days, but of 1,103 days. Does 1,103 equal 1,150? When we look at this, when we approach this, we need to make sure that our interpretation of the Bible is in accordance with letting the Bible explain itself. 
Now, here we have a period of 49 years. Here we have a period of, as it says in the Bible, 62 weeks, but if we multiply that by 7, we would have 434 years. From the time that we have been able to establish that Christ was baptized to the time in which Stephen was stoned, here we have seven years. Now, this same understanding of 1,150 days was occurring during the time when Father Miller was first presenting his understanding of scripture and was presenting these charts. It is still occurring today. From all of this, Forty nine, four thirty four, and seven. We would have four hundred ninety years. Now, <clears throat> when we look at this beginning in four fifty seven BC from the history that we have observed, we can see the time in which Ezra and Nehemiah were causing the walls and the streets to be repaired. There will be more on this as we get into the study that we're going to have both on Friday and on Sabbath. But this prophecy, this timeline for the last 43 years has been largely set aside within Adventism. Why? What is said about this time frame? What is said about this prophecy? Is this not the central pillar and foundation of the Advent faith? And if it is the central pillar and foundation, what happens when you remove the central pillar or the foundation? Everything about that belief falls apart. So brothers and sisters, we have a challenge before us. Do we understand our faith? Do we understand the basis for our faith? Daniel understood this. The first year of Darius would have occurred at a, in about 535 B.C., if I understand my, my timeline right. Uh, you're talking about Darius the, the, the Great? Uh, okay. Darius the I believe it's 
So which Darius are you talking about? I believe we're talking, who was the one that followed Cyrus? That's, well, after Cyrus, yeah, you're going to have Cambyses and then False Myrtus and then Darius. But and he's going to begin to reign uh, in 522. But we're being, we're being told in Daniel 9, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus. Okay, so that's going to be the one. Uh, be, and, yeah, he's the Darius the Mede. Darius the Mede. Yeah, so he's going to reign. Uh, I mean, he's going to conquer Babylon in uh, uh, 537. And then he's going to die in five, or, or 539, and then he's going to die in 537. Isn't that Cyrus that dies? No. Is it Darius? It's Darius that dies, and then Cyrus becomes okay. the king in 537 in okay. the fall All right. of Babylon. They're, okay. they're both kings before that, just not king of Babylon. Right. Okay, so what we have in his first year, Daniel was given this vision. In that time frame, Daniel is noting the time in which all of these events are going to be occurring. Now, as we proceed, we're going to take a very deep dive into this tomorrow because there are multiple symbols that from listening to all of the presentations, coming to understand more from the book of Judges, coming to work with the tools that Brother Iran has been presenting, learning of the chronology that Brother Stephen has presented, that we're going to be able to take this and we're going to affix it to history so tightly, so completely, that there is not going to be a question as to what we're looking at. Antiochus Epiphanes died about 164 BC. Did Antiochus Epiphanes ever stand up against the Prince of Princes? How could he? How could he stand against Christ when Christ wasn't even on the earth? In this depiction, we are able to show that there was a reason in the Gospels that you had two people that understood the time in which the Messiah would have come to Israel, one of whom was Anna the prophet. Now, how would they understand when the Messiah was going to come if they didn't have way marks, if they didn't have road signs telling them that this was about to happen. This is why these symbols are so important for us today. What they are showing us is our place in history. It is showing us where we need to pay attention. Now, this introduces a, a final point. Here we have this number of 490. It is a symbol. 490 is also shown here within the chart. What can we say about this time of 490 years? What is it representing to Daniel's people? 
time of probation. So if 490 is a time of probation, we should be able to go back and look at specific times in Bible history and establish other <clears throat> testimony that will set 490 as a symbol of the time of probation. And we're going to look to do that in the rest of these meetings. The question I'm going to ask for your consideration. If 490 is important, if you were to be shown a 490 year period relevant to us today, would we wish to accept it? Would we wish to see that a probationary period could be about to close. And what would that do to your religious thought and experience? Now. And I make a comment here just please. regarding this issue of Atticus Epiphanes. Yes. Uh, this was the issue uh, with Desmond Ford at Glacier View. Very much. Uh, the tell, what, what was the word? This tell us something principle that he had. Apostle Madlik. Yeah, I've, I've never pronounced it before, so. Right. <laughs> but uh, the idea was that, well, Atticus Epiphanes was a fulfillment, but it was a type of what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And there was actually a type of truth in it. I don't um, disagree. Um, that we could look at this history, but what he he tried to argue is that since that this was actually the real fulfillment and uh, it discredited uh, our application of the 2300 days as 2300 years. Right. And it's interesting that um, in this movement we understand the period that the manna fell uh, as 14,587 days. That's 14,400, one tenth of 444,000 plus 187. Right. And from that meeting on August 10th, 1980 at Glacier View, as we have noted, it's 14,587 days to July 18, 2020. Right. And so this becomes very relevant in understanding this message. Um, and of course, we have the tools to analyze this period of time much more closely than most people have. Right. And so people have tried to argue for this 1150 days but they make all kinds of errors. Yes. Now, in this situation, making use of the tools and applying these with the Bible are here to help us in our understanding of these prophecies. They are here to present before us for our consideration that which we need to know at this time in Earth's history. Now, any thoughts or questions? Any comments? The idea that the prophecy of Daniel 8, yes. uh, 14, was applying to Antiochus Epiphanes, when did that begin? Was it not a Jesuit concept, Algasar, with a preterist view, or was it developed prior to that? This, this has become what they would call the preterist view, yes. And how it was developed it may well have been been developed as a defense 
against what Father Miller was teaching? Yeah, it was actually developed by the Jews as a defense. Um, part of it was they wanted to believe Atticus Epiphanes was the Messiah, or not Atticus, but uh, Judas Maccabeus was the Messiah in his attack against okay. Atticus Epiphanes. And so that's where it first began. So it was something popular with the Jews. Okay. But it, it was not, it was then promoted later on within Christianity. Okay. So, with all that we've been addressing, the main point here is that the tools that are being presented, along with the chronology as we have been discussing, are things for us to be able to use and to make use of. Now, there are quite a number of things that we're going to use to tie this back in tomorrow. This was just establishing the foundation for tomorrow's discussion. Any other thoughts? Any other questions? Well, there, there is a question in the chat regarding what is the difference between Daniel 8.13 and 9.24. Okay. And, um, I mean, these are going to be addressed a little bit in my studies, but you, you might want to address that as well because we're dealing with the 70 weeks. Um, and uh, here, uh, this is a addressing the abomination of desolation. So we know that there is what happens with, uh, I think this is what the question is about, what happens with uh, Rome... Right. At the beginning, right, so we have, you know, standing up against Christ, right, against the Prince of Princes and the destruction of the temple, which, of course, that's what Daniel 9, verse 24 to 27 is about. Now, I do address that in my studies on in the midst of the week. Right. Um, but they're all connected. They, they have to be connected. Yeah. But we know there's also the abomination of desolation as you look at it through the papacy, right? Correct. So, so these are the issues that confuse people. What and, yeah. Part of what we're going to do, your studies are going to cover this. We're going to look at this and the daily and the abomination of desolation, and we're going to lay this out in a very different way tomorrow. So, we are coming very close to our, the close of our time here today. Be prepared. Tomorrow we're going to go into this deeper. We're going to look at symbols. We're going to look at way marks for us to be able to understand what these are showing us. We are going to cover the daily we are going to cover the abomination which maketh desolate. We're going to cover this vision in a manner I don't think has ever been covered before. So, shall we close with prayer? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunities we have to open your word, to consider your word, to learn more so that we may fully understand that which you would have us to know at this time. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for opening our minds and showing us that which we need. Direct us now as we enjoy a time of fellowship. Be with us and guide us. For this we ask and this we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.